hadn't seen Happy Birthday to the preacher since he didn't come today. So, guess what? He gets left out. Anyway, as y'all can see, we have no announcements, so I don't have to stand up here very long. I do have one announcement, though. I'm sorry. Sandra, Sandra wanted me to remind those of you that normally come to her or would like to join her Wednesday morning Bible study. It is starting to back up this Wednesday at 9 o'clock in the portable. Yeah, this Wednesday. Did anybody else? Yes. Um, I also have another one because um, we do have our crafters meeting at 1 o'clock every Tuesday, but this we will, we will go back to it this Tuesday at 1 o'clock in the morning. Okay. That's <coughs> fun. <laughs> Any other announcements? Okay. Seeing none, let us pray. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we are so thankful to close out one year and start another. Father, we just pray that we have a great year, Lord. Be with each and every one of us, Lord, as we start this new year. Father, let us start it out, Father, with putting you first in our lives, as we should always do. Father, we thank you for those that are here and those that could not be here, Lord. We know the reasons why. Father, just be with us through the rest of the service. Be with Mike as he brings the message. Father, and just let us hear his words or let them be your words, Lord, coming through him. This we ask in my son's name. Amen. 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 How about we three kings, Aurora and Art, also known as Larry, Curly, and Mo. That's all ten.
They will receive blessings from the Lord. And take the from the God of their salvation. Such is the generation of those who seek the Lord. Who seek the face of the God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the ruler of glory may come in. The Lord is the Lord, o Lord. The Lord, strong and mighty, the Lord, <coughs> mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the ruler of glory may come in. Who is the ruler of glory? The Lord of hosts, the Lord.
each other with brotherly love, especially those that you haven't seen since last year. <laughs>
Any others? Those in the medical field, 
they take care of our loved ones. Lord, we, we lift up praises. Christina is feeling better. Be with the Wilder family. Oh God, as, as they, they recover from this. Lord, we ask a, the praise given to you, oh God, of Loretta's brother being home. Lord, we worry. We worry when our loved ones are going through illnesses and pains and despair. But Lord, we don't worry. We know you are there. You are there in all things, oh God. Lord, we lift up a, a pray, a prayer for, for our church to go through awakening this year, to come closer to you. Let us be nearer to you, O oh Lord, as we start this year. Lord, we, we lift up all those that had an accident last night. Down at 2:20 and, and Blandy, Lord, we lift up that family. We don't know them, Lord, but you do. Keep them in your loving care. Lord, we lift up the all the peace officers, the police officers, the firemen, the ambulance drivers, Lord, all those that stand watch over us and are there for us in our time of need. We lift them up, O oh God. We also lift up our military, O oh Lord, those that are deployed and those that are home, ready to be wherever they're needed. We lift them up, O oh God. Lord, we lift up prayers for our pastor. And thank you, O oh God, that he has this time to rejuvenate and have some family time. A lot of us spent this week, past week, Lord, being with family, both near and far. So, Lord, we, we, we thank you for those moments that we can be with our family. We lift all this up. In the name of Jesus Christ, your Son. In 1775, John Wesley introduced a covenant service as an important part of spiritual life in the Methodist societies. This renewal service was a time for Methodists to gather annually in a time of self-examination, reflection, and dedication, wholly giving up themselves and renewing covenant with God. Repentance through confession and commitment was a key focus of this service, demanding humility from those willing to submit themselves to the dynamic words stated within the liturgy. And according to Wesley's journal, though the covenant service was held on various occasions throughout the year, by the end of his life, the service was observed typically on or the Sunday nearest, January the 1st. The covenant renewal service is a practice that continues <coughs> in churches today, often near the beginning of the new year. It has undergo, undergone many revisions and ad adaptations, but its purpose is evocative of a ceremony of commitment to ongoing discipleship and Christ-like character, that has always remained intact. Lord, 
You have been our dwelling place for generations. <coughs> I'd like for you to repeat after me. You are the one true God who reigns forever. You are the one true God who reigns forever. So this message is going to be a little bit different than just a normal message. This is going to be a covenant time of prayer, reflection, to start our new year, getting closer to our Lord. Let us pray. Almighty God, you search our hearts, and you see every part of us. All our desires are known to you, and from you, no secrets are hidden. <coughs> By the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, cleanse our hearts that we may perfectly love you and glorify your holy name. We pray this through Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us how to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. hear from the book of Matthew, the scripture for this morning. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people from one another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep on his right hand and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer the Lord. Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when, when, when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those on his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me. Naked and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison. You did not visit me. Then they will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So dearly loved brothers and sisters, the Christian life is a life found in Christ. It is redeemed from sin and consecrated to God. We are those that have entered into this life and have been admitted into the new covenant of Jesus Christ. He is our mediator of this covenant. He sealed it with his own blood so that it will last forever. On one side of this covenant stands God, who promises to give us new life in Jesus Christ. 
the author and perfecter of our faith. Every day, God proves his goodness and grace to us, showing us that his promises still stand firm. On the other side, we stand as those who promise to no longer live life for ourselves, but to only live for Jesus Christ because he loved us and given his life for us. There are times in our lives when it is important for us to remember and to reaffirm our promises and vows. In the same way, we come today to renew our covenant with God. Many generations have done this before us. Today, we make the covenant our own, renewing with both joy and sincerity the covenant that binds us all to God. We are those who seek to live as true disciples of Jesus Christ. But sometimes we fall short. Let us examine ourselves before God, humbly confessing our sins and submitting our heart so that we do not deceive ourselves and cut ourselves away from God. Let us pray. Father God, you have set forth the way of life through your Son, Jesus Christ, whom you love dearly. We shamefully confess, confess that we have been slow to learn of him and have been at times reluctant to follow him. You have spoken and called to us, but we have not listened. You have revealed your beauty to us we have been blind. You have stretched out your hands to us, to our friends, but we have passed them by. We have accepted your gifts and offered little thanks. We are unworthy of your unchanging love. We now confess to you our sins. Please forgive us for the poverty of our worship. Please forgive us for the selfishness of our prayers. Please forgive us for our inconsistency and unbelief. Please forgive us for the ways we neglect fellowship and your grace. Please forgive us for our hesitation to tell others about Christ. Please forgive us for the way we deceive others. Forgive us when we waste time and when we misuse the gifts you have given us. Forgive us for when we have made excuses for the wrong things we have done and when we have tried to avoid responsibility. Forgive us that we've been unwilling to overcome evil with good and that we have not been ready to carry our cross. Forgive us that we have not allowed your love to work through us to help others and that we have not made their suffering our own. Forgive us for those times when instead of working for unity, we made it hard for others to live with us because of our lack of forgiveness, our inconsiderate judgment or our quick criticism. Forgive us for when we have not tried to reconcile with others and when we have been slow to seek redemption. Forgive us also for these sins that we silently confess to you now.
God, the Father of all mercies, is faithful to cleanse us from our sins and restore us to Christ's image. Praise and glory be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So as we gather here today before the Lord and now in covenant are set with ourselves to Christ as his servants, let us give ourselves to him so that we may fully belong to him. Jesus Christ has left us with many services to be done. Some of these services are easy and honorable. Some can be difficult or disgraceful. Some of these services line up with our desires and our interests. Others can be contrary to both. In some, we please both Christ and ourselves. But then there are other works where we cannot please Christ except by denying ourselves. Let us remember, let ourselves be Christ's servant. Be his servant. Let us follow his command. No longer follow our own desires. Give yourself up completely to his will. The power and strength to live as true servants is given to us in Christ. Accept the place and work that he gives us, acknowledging that he alone will be our reward. Christ is Savior to those who are his true servants, and to all. Let us go find, reach out and find them. He is the source of all salvation. To be his servant is to fully consent to his will. Christ accepts nothing less. Christ will be all in all. He will be all in all in our life, or he'll be nothing. Let him be our all in all. So let us confirm this truth in Holy Covenant. This coming year, make it a reality in your life in these ways. First, set apart a time in your day, maybe more than once, to spend alone with the Lord. Seek to perceive God's special care for you and his gracious acceptance of you. Carefully think through the words of, of this covenant and its conditions. Examine your heart, even if you have freely given your life to Christ. Name your sin. To him. Reflect on whether you're willing to choose Christ's holy laws and strict commands. Be sure you are clear in all of these. Don't try to lie to God. Secondly, uphold a serious spirit of holy awe and repentance. God wants our repentance. He knows what we've done. And he deserves our holy awe. He is the Lord. The Lord is. Claim God's covenant. Do not trust in your own strength and power, but, for, but rely on God's promises of giving grace and strength. In this way, he will empower you to keep your side of the covenant promise. Be determined to be faithful. You have given your heart and life to God. You have opened your mouth and dedicated yourself to the Lord. And with God's power, never go back to your former way of living. And lastly, always be prepared to renew your covenant with God. Like we said earlier, daily, maybe more than once a day. If need be, fall on your knees, lift up your hands, open your heart to the Lord. Do this every day of the year. And as the praise band makes their way up, 
Would you reach in front, grab a hymnal, turn with me to page 607. Six zero seven. Let us pray this covenant prayer, the Wesley tradition. I am no longer my own, but thine. Put me to what thy will. Rank me with whom thou wilt. Put me to doing. Put me to suffering. Let me be employed by thee or laid aside for thee. Exalted for thee or brought low by thee. Let me be full. Let me be empty. Let me have all things. Let me have nothing. I freely and heartily yield all things to thy pleasure and disposal. And now, O glorious and blessed God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, thou art mine, and I am thine. So be it. In the covenant which I have made on earth, let it be ratified in heaven. Please stand and join us as we close today's service with Old Church Fire and We Got Online.
seals the new covenant with his blood on the cross bring you peace. May the Holy Spirit guide your life both now and forever. Go in peace to serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. And for 2023, let's <laughs> be the time that finds.